Hola, clase. ¿Cómo están? Excelente. And welcome back to Learning with Senior Cow Cow. So, let's go ahead and present our Cowie Award and go ahead and get that out of the way. All right. So, this week's winner is we got some pretty good stuff. Here we have uh, Alicia giving us a, an acceptance speech for getting her award. And I might as well read it. She says, OMG, I'm finally a Cowie winner. I'd like to thank everyone who's gotten me to where I am today. I'd like to thank my family, my friends, and my puppy. Lastly, I'd like to thank the one and only Senor Cow Cow for this esteemed honor. Thank you all, and happy birthday, Billy. Thank you, Alicia. You're awesome. Okay, today's winner is going to be Joy. Joy says, I'm not going to lie. This is the fifth day that I was five minutes into the Spanish one lesson before realizing it's the wrong video. I think we've all been there. All right, so here we go. Oh, some things just never get old, like me. Okay, so we're doing this a little bit differently today. If you got a good grade on the last test that we had before we went to learning from home, then you are good for a couple of days. Over the next couple of days, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reteach the material, I'm going to go back over it, I'm going to give you time to practice, and then on Thursday, I'm going to publish a quiz that's only good for one day. You go online, you get to take it one time, and that will be your new grade for that test, okay? Which again is going to be a quiz grade, but still some of y'all, mm, I would say many of y'all got a very low grade on that. There was things like 45 and 17. There were plenty of people who made good grades, but I would say just as many that made bad grades, and that's why I want to spend the time to do this the right way. I'm giving you until Thursday because this is kind of late in the day. It's, it's 2.30 as I'm recording this, and I want to be fair to everybody and give you at least two solid days to prepare, okay, because we have very few grades left. So like I said, um, if you are good on that test, that like you got a really good grade on that last test, I wouldn't worry about this class for a couple of days and you can focus on your other things while I'm getting everybody where they should be. Okay? Now I don't have a warm up today, but I'm just going to jump right into it and let's have a look. Okay, so let me close that. All right, I've put everything together in one lesson. I'm going to go through it from start to finish today. If you need to see it again, then play this video again. Okay? All right, I'm just going to start at the beginning. Okay. Commands. Commands tell people what to do. All of these, for right now, that we're talking about are informal commands. Two. This is when you're telling your friend, your brother, your classmate to do something. Okay, and as usual, I'm not going to be slowing down, but you're welcome to pause the video uh, if you are rewind and things like that, okay? To form a to command, there is one step. Conjugate the verb for third person. El or ella. Okay, for example, think back to Spanish 1. If you want to say he eats, it is simply el come. If you want to look your friend right in the eyes and say eat the pizza, you say come la pizza. And that's all. Other examples are things like bebe, drink, habla, talk, vive, live, mira, look. Okay? For example, I drink the water. If you want to try these, you can pause it now. All right, if you want to look at your friend and say, drink the water, you say, bebe el agua. If you want to tell your friend, run to the school, corre a la escuela. If it were an AR verb, like um, hablar, or let's do escuchar. If you want to tell your friend, listen, you say, escucha. As always, with irregular verbs, you follow a different set of rules. All right, for example, uh, poner, which is to put, turns into pon. And that's the whole verb. If you want to tell someone put, you just say pon. Um, for example, put the money on the table. Pon el dinero en la mesa. Uh, to have is ten. You want to tell your friend, all right, we'll have money tomorrow. Ten dinero. Okay. Venir. Come here. You say ven aquí. Ben, come, Ben. Decir, to say or tell, turns into di. Ir, to go, turns into be. Ser, to be, <laughs> turns into, excuse me, whew, 
turns into se. Like if you want to tell somebody, be nice, se simpatico. Salir, to leave, becomes sal. And hacer, to make her do, becomes as. So the little rhythm we learned for these, it goes, Ponten ben dive se salas. Ponten ben dive se salas. And you have to remember what they mean, of course. Okay, again, if you want to try these, pause the video now. All right, come to my house. Ben, a mi casa, do the homework, as la tarea. All right, negative two commands. For these, let me double check I'm recording. Hold on one second, guys. Okay, good. I thought so. Just checking. Don't want to waste our time. Okay, these are the little behind the scenes steps of how to form a negative command. Number one, put no. No makes things negative. Number two, Whatever the verb is, conjugate for yo. Tango. Take off the ending. Tang. Switch the AR and ER. So an ER verb now is tenga. And you add S. No tengas. Okay, again, that's kind of the long behind the scenes, behind the curtain way of explaining what's going on. All right, so for example, here is eat and don't eat. Come. No comas. Hablar talk and don't talk. Habla, no hables. So as you can see, whenever something's n negative, it sounds backwards from what you're used to, okay? You're not used to putting an A on an ER verb and, and an E on an AR verb. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm waking up. I've been working all day. All right, so here's some good little side-by-sides. Again, if you want to do these on your own, pause the video now and try. All right, run is corre, don't run, no corras. Swim, which is from nadar, an AR verb. Nada, no nades. Write and don't write. Escribe, no escribas. These are your negative commands. All right, they go pon, no pongas. Ten, no tengas. Ben, no vengas. Di, no digas. Be, no vayas, se, no seas, sal, no salgas, as, no hagas. And again, these are actually very useful verbs. If you want to tell someone, um, don't come to my house, no vengas a mi casa. Don't say goodbye. No digas adios. Don't go to the mall. No vayas al centro comercial. Don't be lazy. No seas perezoso. Don't leave, no salgas, okay, etc. And then here's our little song, the one that goes, Pon no pongas, ten no tengas, estos son los irregular commands. Ven no vengas, di no digas, estos son los irregular commands. Ve no vayas, se no seas, estos son los irregular commands. Sal no salgas, as no hagas, estos son los irregular commands. Oh, American Idol. Okay, so here's some examples. Again, you can pause and try this. This is the verb ir. This would be ve a Chile, no vayas a Cuba. Okay, so to sum it all up, here, here's all that in one place. For informal commands, like to your friend, these are the endings. For AR, it is A, no S, and for ER and IR verbs, it is E, no AS. Okay, for example, habla, no hables, come, no comas, vive, no vivas. Knowing how to do that is a big part of what we're doing. Okay, formal commands. Use these when talking to someone formally or politely, typically someone with whom you are on a last name basis, your boss, your principal, a customer, uh, an adult that you are not familiar with. Okay, so here's what, just so you can see right off the bat what it looks like when you, here's what we just did. Habla, no hables. Come, no comas. 
with formal commands, it looks like this. Hable, no hable, coma, no coma. So if you want to politely tell someone to speak, you say, hable, por favor. If you want to politely tell someone don't speak, no hable. If you want to tell someone eat, coma, politely tell them don't eat, no coma. Okay, so this is what I've been really trying to get across to everybody. The only time when the AR is still an A is when you are telling your friend what to do. Comer, come. Telling your friend, yes, do this. Every other time, you're going to switch it to the opposite thing. See the AR? S and then A, A. ER, as, oops, as, ha, ha. The only time it looks like the original verb is when you tell your friend to do it. To form these formal commands, you conjugate for yo, such as tengo, drop the o, teng, and switch the ending, tenga. Okay, ar becomes e, er and ir becomes a. And again, the whole reason we start with the whole conjugate for yo thing is to take care of things like yogo verbs, like tengo, pongo, digo, traigo, and stem changers, things like sirvo, juego, pienso. Okay, like if you want to tell your friend sleep, duerme, or politely duerma you do stem change all right here are some formal commands to practice go ahead and pause it here if you're going to practice coma los tacos hable espanol viva in miami to make negative very simple put no politely tell someone run corra don't run no corra okay so here's one for you to try. How would you, using the verb cantar, how would you politely tell someone, don't sing, please? It would be, no cante, por favor. No cante. That would be a polite way to, to tell someone. The irregulars are the same as the irregulars. You just take off the S. You remember it was pon, no pongas, ten, no tengas. This is ponga. No ponga, tenga, no tenga, venga, no venga. It's the same as all those negatives, just without the s. Okay. And here's a few at the bottom. You don't, you won't need these for these for this test, but dar is de, estar este, and saber sepa. Okay. And again, here you can see stem changers, things like duerma, piense. Okay. So using your irregulars, here's one to try. Don't go to the house. Pause it here if you need to. No vaya a la casa. Don't be mean. Again, pause if you need to. From the verb ser. No sea antipatico. Give the money. De el dinero. Okay, so here's a little affirmative and negative. Ponga, no ponga. Just like we said. Okay, and here's a final little side-by-side -side for you. This was the same slide as earlier. Habla, no hables. Hable, no hable. Come, no comas. Coma, no coma. If you can understand this slide, you're in pretty good shape. Okay, <clears throat> here's a little informal, I mean, a little irregular side-by-side. -side. Informal, ten, no tengas. Formal, tenga, no tenga. Okay, these are three you definitely want to hold on to if you want to screenshot this, write it down, whatever you're going to do. All right, if you want to practice your informal commands, tinyurl.com slash cowmans. If you want to practice your formal commands, it's tinyurl.com slash formal cowmans. And attaching pronouns, which is what your test is over, is tinyurl.com slash cowmanspractice. Okay, that last one is going to be extremely important because that is going to be more or less the format that your quiz is going to be in on Wednesday. Okay? All right. So let's continue. All right. Indirect object pronouns. Let me make sure I put both of these. I'm sure I did. Hold on one second, guys. I 
have to. I'll, I'll pull that up. We're we'll gonna pull that up real quick. Hold on. Um, let me go to this. Shoot. I hate when this happens, but that's okay. Uh, actually, it's gonna be in. Hold on one second. I need to go to this. Go to direct object pronouns. Okay. All right, that didn't take too long. Sorry, y'all. Trying to keep this as short as I can. Okay. Direct object pronouns are the ones that go mete, lo la, no sos, los las. Or a little Viking song. Mete, lo la, no sos, los las is the direct object pronouns. Ah. Alright, direct object pronouns are used to replace the direct object in a sentence. A direct object is whatever receives the action of the verb. Very simply put, it's whatever the verb touches. What is the verb talking about. For example, in the sentence, I eat the cookie. Eat is the verb, so the cookie is what I eat. If it's I see the girl, see is the verb, the girl is what I see, or who in this case. In Spanish, I have the dogs is tengo los perros. When we take out the direct object and use a direct object pronoun, it now says los tengo. I have them. Notice I did not say the word dogs, perros. We do this to avoid saying the dogs, the dogs, the dogs a million times, just like we do in English. Right? Somebody says, oh, did you get the dog? Yeah, I got it. It's in my car. Oh, let me see it. You don't have to keep saying dog. That's the whole point. A direct object pronoun matches what it replaces in number and gender. If you take out pizza, you put la. If you take out casas, you put las. And it goes right before the verb. Okay, for example, we need the cookies. Necesitamos las galletas. We need them. Las necesitamos. She wants the cat. Quiere el gato. She wants it. Lo quiere. All right, here's, you can pause if you want to try these. They eat the pizza. Comen la pizza. They eat it. La comen. We have the books. Tenemos los libros. We have them. Los tenemos. They watch us. Nos miran. Okay. So what's important to understand is that the verb and the little pronoun are completely independent. It could be they watch me, they watch you, they watch it, they watch us. Okay. It could be me miran, te miran. Either way, miran means they watch. Okay, so uh, now back to this one. Then we get to indirect object pronouns, or IOPs. These are the ones that go me, te, le, nos, os, les. These are all people who are receiving things. They're like little shipping labels on a package. For example, if this box says me, it's going to me. This is for me. That's where it's going to end up. They answer the question, to whom or for whom something is. It's all about the destination, where something is going. For example, he gives the book to me. Me da el libro. They buy the dog for us. Nos compran el perro. So here's an illustration. I throw the ball to you. The verb is throw. The ball is what I throw, that's the direct object, and where it's headed, you, that's the indirect object pronoun. The indirect object, I should say. All right, here's some for you to practice if you want to pause. We buy a house for you. Te compramos una casa. For you, we buy a house. She sends the chocolate to us. Nos manda el chocolate. She sends the chocolate to us. All right, these are some useful verbs that are good to know. Dar is to give. Traer is to bring. Mandar, to send. To send. Vender, to sell. 
comprar, to buy, and regalar is to gift, to give a gift of something. Okay, now, this brings us to the last part of our lesson and what brings it all together, what the test is over. Attaching pronouns to commands. Um, so, for right now, what I'm going to show you is just informal commands to show you how this works. Okay? So, what do these say? This says, pon el aceite en el sartén. Put the oil in the pan. So, what does this mean? Ponlo en el sartén. Instead of saying, put the oil, we're just saying, put it in the pan. Corta las papas. Cut the potatoes. Corta las. Cut them. Okay? So we learned this in conjunction with our uh, recipe and cooking vocabulary. Put it in the pan, cut it, serve it, peel it, boil it, uh, fry them. You attach the pronoun to the end of the command verb. Okay? So if habla is telling someone talk, hablame is talk to me. If it has at least three syllables, then you count back three vowels and put an accent mark on that vowel. Okay? So you go one, two, three vowels. I'm going to tell you right now, on the quiz Thursday, I do not want you to put an accent mark. Okay? You will type the word, but don't type an accent mark. It's not going to be part of the answer. There's a very specific reason I'm doing this. Okay? So ignore that for now. All right. If it's negative, you put the pronoun after no. So here we go. Talk to me is hablame. Don't talk to me. No me hables. Talk to me. Don't talk to me. Buy it, referring to casa, would be comprala. Don't buy it. No la compres. Okay, so here are some for you to try. You can pause here. Again, this is all practice for the quiz. It's one of your last, last grades of the year. All right, buy it, referring to sopa. Comprala. Eat them, referring to galletas. Comelas. Have it, referring to perro. Tenlo. It's like saying, oh, when I, yeah, when I come over and see your dog, have it when I get there. Tenlo. Okay, here's a little side-by-side -side for you, and I think this is the end. All right, so, come, no comas, coma, no coma, if it's formal. All right, so here we're talking about French fries. We're not going to say French fries. We're just going to say them. Come las, no las comas. Coma las, no las coma. Again, I know, I know I've gone a little bit quick during this presentation, but like I said, you can rewind, you can pause, make sure you understand. And the last one, mira, no mires, mire, no mire. And if we add a pronoun, it's all the same. What we've been doing, we're just adding a pronoun in. Míralo. Look at it. No lo mires. Oh, don't look at it. Mírelo. No lo mire. Okay? So what I'm going to leave you with is this. I'm going to show you this the informal Quizlet. It looks like this. I started here on, on slide 17 because the first ones are irregular. So eat, you say, oh, eat is come. Don't eat, no comas. Run, corre, don't run, no corras. And if you skip back to the first, let's just try it. If you skip back to the first, you have put, which is pon, have, ten, come, ben. All right, you need to know how to say all these things. Okay. Um, and then here are your formal commands. This is from the second one. Okay, your formal commands. Eat, coma, don't drink, no beba, talk, hable, don't study, no estudie. And finally, this third and final link is the one that lets you practice for the test. I'm telling you, the test is going to be like this. So look, at, I made this today so you guys could practice. Informal, eat it, would be comela. Don't eat it. No lo comas. Okay? You need to go over and over and over these 20 cards I've made. It's 10 that are informal, and then the same 10 that are formal. 
this is your friend, this Quizlet, this one. Okay, that's the one that's going to practice you up for Thursday's quiz. All right, so I'm going to leave you with that. That's going to be your practice for today. Quizlet, Quizlet, Quizlet. Practice. It is worth it for the grade. It's worth it to get credit for the class and, you know, and be done. All right, so that's going to be it for today. I'll catch you on the next one. Adios.